Sublime Magnificent. <laughs> Hey guys, you know who it is, what's going on, when it's happening, where it's at, and why we're here today. How you doing? It is I, the sublimely magnificent Big Ugly himself, Omari Ellis Feo Grande on YouTube, back with another episode of This Guy Hasn't Seen, but we got a different edition, we'll get into it, it's more of a These Guys Hasn't Seen, and obviously, we're trading episodes, and of course, I'm trading and talking with the individual I have done numerous times on this show and will continue to do. Co-host, running mate, one of my best friends in the world, El Director himself, Bill Smith. Hey, Omari. Thank you for having me back. It's a, it's a great day here in St. Louis. It is St. Louis Cardinals opening day uh, for baseball, and... Uh, Although they lost, it was a great game, and I am riding the high of this day. Just watched a little bit of wrestling, um, and I'm excited to talk about it. Tell them why we're talking about it, Omari. All right. Well, you see, we got a different thing going for you this week. We have a twofer for you where we're trading with each other. And we got two different matches because Bill had the idea, hey, why not? We, we both watched wrestling throughout our lives at various points. Bill, not so much on the modern day. Me, I kind of fell and went, but I've been watching more modern day stuff than Bill watched with the old school. He's watched more old school. So he's Yeah, like, I thought not? it was a very good track. Yeah. Like like I started when I was very young uh in the in the early Hulk Hogan years and bled through the attitude era while 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 we met at high school. And you were kind of already watching in and in, in the Attitude Era, and then continued on forward. So it's, it's this good yeah. little, it's good, good this, yeah. this this good little line where we cross over at the middle. <laughs> I think it's a the, the, a the, great the, great the slice of, of your, opinions. The end of your like heavy following wrestling period was the genesis of mine. Pretty much, it was around they. Yeah. That's where we met at the intersection of. Oh, you like wrestling too. <laughs> uh, but obviously you know we've been more friends than that so bill had an idea he knew that i had not seen a certain match and i was like you know i haven't but if we're doing this i want to show you a match from modern day as well so we're trading off matches so we got a match from wwe a classic match ironically uh not to date the video but we are filming this very close to wrestlemania weekend um we have a match from wrestlemania i already dated it by saying that it was opening day <laughs> i literally dated it <laughs> also true so wrestlemania is this saturday two days from now uh <laughs> call it right now who's winning the main event roman reigns hey sorry cody See, I know things. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I need to focus because <laughs> I know me of like tangent time. No. Right. Uh, no. Anyway. Yeah. So I'm first up. I submitted. So here's the deal, guys. The greatest wrestler of all time. When you're talking about 360, everything that is being a pro wrestler other than potentially being a good dude behind the scenes early in your life. <laughs> Cocaine is a hell of a drug. And then painkillers. According to uh, Rick James. And booze. Uh, all the things. Um, listen, guys, Shawn Michaels is the greatest. And uh, I am going to probably over a series of wrestling episodes of this show <laughs> prove it to my friend Omari. Um, so I was like, what am I going to go with here? Shawn Michaels. Uh, there's a lot of options. Mm, do I pick the Iron Man match? Everyone says that's the greatest match of all time. It's great, but it also has some slow moments. We might we might visit it at some point here. Um, that was the initial also, idea was the yeah, Iron Man. Yeah, that was the genesis as I was I was about ready to pick the Iron Man match. But then I kind of thought, uh, hold on. 
Sean always says, if he's asked, what's your best match? He always says any of the matches with his big guys, any of the big foes that he's had, he thinks he works best with those big guys. And so I was thinking maybe going along that range. Obviously, the Undertaker ones, you've seen most of those. I most showed of you them, one. Most of them happened late in his career. Correct. Um, uh, uh, so I was thinking maybe like the Sid Vicious one from like Royal Rumble. But we ended up settling on one of the coolest matches. Uh, it, it It is featuring the the bad guy the uh the rest in peace scott hall um and then it is also obviously uh involving mr wrestlemania the innovator Shawn michaels at wrestlemania 10 and it is the first mainstream televised ladder match that's right Shawn michaels was involved with the first ladder match the first iron man match the first Hell in the Cell match, the first WWE. Elimination Chamber match, uh, the first strap chamber yourself. Two, huh? Yeah, he won the very first Elimination Chamber match. Nice. That was part of his comeback. Okay, I believe you. To, to, to glory. And that's God. awesome. That's awesome. Um, I think that's. I thought probably, you were watching during that period. That's probably where the promo, where he's like, I never. I knew there was some match. I remember the promo of his where he's like, I've never even heard of this kind of match. But then again, I had never heard of a ladder match. I had never heard of a Hell in a Cell match. I had never heard of So that probably was his promo talking about going into the Elimination Chamber. WWE has had way too many fucking Elimination Chamber matches these days. So I oh, did okay. not remember the competitors in the first, let alone who won. Yeah, I believe, I believe, uh, I mean, Google me, uh, um, uh, but I believe, I believe that was the very first one and that he won it, um, but I could be wrong. And of course, the very first Hell in a Cell took place here in St. Louis. Um, uh, and... I knew about that match. <laughs> I knew he was in the first <laughs> Hell in a Cell and the first ladder. I knew he was in the first ladder. I had just never seen it. I have seen the first Hell in a Cell because if I remember correctly, that's where Kane also debuts. Uh, bad, no, bad blood. I don't have a year. What is the year here? We are looking at 1994, March 20th, 1994. This is uh, Mullet Central USA is, is where, uh, but, but uh, Madison Square Garden uh, has has been transformed to uh, the mullet capital of the world for this match, where Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels' manager at the time, Diesel, all rocking some thick, thick mullets. <laughs> um, Omari, what what were you thinking uh, going into some some retro wrestling? So. Obviously, the match for it to be, regardless of whether or not it was the, you know, technically a pinky out first or whatever, calm down, people. Um, no, regardless of whether or not it's the first technically match, I did know it had to have been ridiculously good uh, and impactful. There'd probably be some good ladder match and violence, but based on what some of the ladder matches today they be doing i figured it'd be relatively tame on that scale for a yeah. ladder match even from the shit that the hardys was doing when i was younger and got introduced to ladder matches like you know i i associate ladders with hardys in my head that don't that just is what it honestly, is honestly same same here yeah same but i expected it but i all at the same time though i expected it to be like i said a tame by ladder match quote unquote standards I did expect old school violence levels just because I know as you get older, you always think things were more brutal back in the day. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, yeah, I don't know how we want to handle like the crossover talk of like comparing the two, but I do feel like there are moments to compare. Well, uh, um, 
uh, and we'll get into that, but I just, I'm just not sure yeah. how it'll flow in, but that was one of the things that I, I, I was going to, I was going to mention as well was, it was just, just kind of, uh, although, although, although stuff is crazier back then, it still feels a little bit more brutal and like, like, like the, 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 just the, 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 the hard hit, the punches, <laughs> Uh, the things like that, it, like it, like you said, there just kind of old school yeah. brawler violence. And even, which we'll get into with the match and the way it went itself, there are things that are... I mean, obviously... let's get into it. Let's just get into yeah. it. Yeah, okay, so getting into the match. Initially, I guess, the match itself, like getting into it, I did think it was funny where the announcer before the match even started, in this next match, there are no rules. <laughs> Back when you had to say that, like for a ladder match, you just got oh yeah, we should mention ladder. that. So, so the announcers are Jerry the King Lawler and Vince McMahon. Would I believe back, Finkel back when he thought the, he was just going to be an like, announcer? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was hoping it would be Jr. for reasons that will become apparent. Yeah, because I thought that'd be a funny like tie-in between the two matches, but. It was Jay, it was King and Vince, which is a combination I had not heard a lot of, but I knew existed. So I was like, this will be cool to hear. Also, I I didn't realize Diesel was involved in the match at all. And eventually found out why I didn't realize Diesel was involved in the <laughs> match at all. He gets sent away pretty pretty quickly, but not before. Uh, I mean, so here's here's one of the reasons why I love that why why I chose this match is well, one, Shawn Michaels to scott hall uh like a rest in peace factor and also because of his transition into nwo and ending up be kind of becoming kevin nash's yeah. crony second fiddle and then they themselves were even just kind of second fiddles to hollywood hogan yeah i feel like scott hall's always been kind of a little underrated i'll give you that and Bo and I think what this match represents is two of our best sellers that we have ever had. Yeah, Scott Hall is one of the most underrated of all time, and uh, or or I not I exaggerated that. He's, he's, he's he is underrated. I will agree with you. He's an underrated for dude for the reasons you listed about him mainly just being pushed further into the background. Once yeah, NWO I mean happened. the fact that that like Scott Hall never won a heavyweight title, he never got to be the man, and that sucks. Like when you look at that dude, spoilers at the end of this match, after everything, after the after the match that they have, Scott wins, Razor Ramon wins, and when you see the shot of him holding those two belts, when when I were to tell you that that man would go on to never winning a championship, never being the the dude, it wouldn't make any sense in did, your brain. Did did you not see the, the the eyes when you just said that? Just talking to me now, because I definitely was like, "Wait, what? He never won one." So no, I never fully agree got, with you. He got tag titles and he got intercontinental with uh with with Razor WWF yeah. as Razor Ramon. Never, never held the big one. Damn. Um, uh, and yeah, and so I was saying, I don't know how far we got into it, but uh, these two are master sellers. I know some people think that Sean oversells. He does. Um, but I think I think that is to a point at some at some points, and even sometimes that's to an extra point like when he's fighting hulk hogan <laughs> and he's and he wants to make a mockery of him <laughs> um but that's a whole other side of sean i guess <laughs> doesn't really appreciate non in-ring performers <laughs> that well um uh but um yeah you can you can look no further on the ability for Razor to sell, Scott Hall to sell, than that clothesline that Diesel hits on him in order to get him booted. Like, that thing feels so hard. You feel that impact on the ground. Uh, that that was 
uh, that 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 was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Standout moment from this match. That is that is. Although I will say it was funny that sorry I I would I will say it's funny that Diesel got ejected despite there being no rules in the match. Right. It was cool to see Earl Hebner though as well speaking of old nostalgia in the match there's a lot of nostalgia in the match but from a storytelling aspect because they also because say what you want about the click all of them will tell you they they love the storytelling aspect about wrestling most wrestlers yeah. will tell you that but especially them uh and your sean's um i love the like little mini character things they had with them coming out of sean like making sure he purposely like dodged the ladder like so he didn't walk under it and razor ramon just the the iconic shot of him walking through the center of it Uh for bad look now i forgot the iconic image that you mentioned at the end of the match i had seen that numerous times but i never put five and six together to realize it was this match i thought the whole time sean was winning this match Mm-hmm. Because now this and, is before the age of the vignette, yeah. as we as we've talked as we talked about heavily behind the scenes because your match later had a vignette that yeah. you wanted me to try and see, so um, it could give you an idea of where they were coming from story wise. Right? Do you do you know why there are two belts? Yes, Sean had an injury or something that had him out for a while. According to uh, yeah, or something that had him out for a while, and he had to vacate his title. Uh, but he and, did. But he. <laughs> but and in the meantime, Razor Ramon won it. But when he came back, he's like, "I never lost this, so fuck it. I'm keeping the title myself. I'm the real champion. No, I'm the real champion. Let's settle this at WrestleMania ladder match." So I, I watched a YouTube video. To try and figure out the story. And since I didn't have a vignette, I just wanted to know just the bare minimum of like, why are they fighting today? Because yeah. that's one of the things like, you know, wrestling, scripted, whatever, choreographed. End of the day, you just seeing two people fight, but you still want to know why. Why does this guy not like this guy? Right. Why, are, why are we here? And we do, and I'm like, okay, they both want to prove they are the one true champion. And as the match goes and stuff, the the announcers do do a great job of reminding you, like, this match is unfair, Sean. <laughs> Lawler, man, that's Cl- classic Lawler. Just what's the heel? I'm all about the heel and entirely on the heel side. (laughs) The the heel is the face to me. Speaking of the heel being the face to everybody, fucking the guy literally called the bad guy was the face in this match. Yeah. And boy, the reactions they used to have for Razor, which again, like I missed the entire Razor area era. I missed the okay. early part. I missed the early part of the Stone Cold era. By the time mm-hmm. I started watching wrestling, was around the time The Rock was coming to more and more prominence. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I like. Let's say. Was it literally The Rock? Was it like there's this cool dude that you got to check out? No, he was Kinda... The Rock. No, I'm saying was The Rock the one that brought you there? Yes, I had a friend that was in my neighborhood. He was the only one that was like the same age as me. Everyone else was like a year younger, Mm -hmm. which doesn't make a big difference, obviously. But when you're a kid, it does. Right. (laughs) Uh, And so he was like, hey, this is a wrestling. And there's this guy, The Rock. I had heard other friends talk about DDP years before, but... I thought they were talking about a superhero because I just kept talking about how he kept using the diamond cutter going bang with his hands and his opponents would lose. So I thought it was like some fucking action show where the guy like would have a diamond cutter like laser hand thing and just bang for years. Like even <laughs> after watching WWE. It wasn't until DDP. It wasn't until I played uh, WCW versus NWO Thunder that I saw Diamond Dallas Page go, it's me, it's me, it's DDP. I'm like, that's what they say that work? They were talking about a wrestler? 
<laughs> so that's funny yeah but when I got in it was because of The Rock because I'd heard him talking about The Rock like they had talked about DDP even though mm-hmm. I still didn't know what was going on he mentioned it was wrestling and then he showed me an episode it was around the time Owen died it was either either Owen died with like weeks before or weeks after I started watching wrestling okay yeah uh because i didn't really know owen hart except for the fact i'm like who's this oh he just died recently oh. that makes it uh yeah that would be that would be when you're when you're going to school that would have been the that would have been late in the fall right yeah. after survivor series i think wasn't that the pay-per-view i did my first pay-per-view i watched was i think back la- no i want to say wrestlemania yeah, 17. Which, hell of a first pay per view to watch. <laughs> WrestleMania, I can't think of which. What was WrestleMania seventeen? Rock of Stone Cold, Stone Cold oh. heel turn at the end. Yeah. My, Limp Biscuits, my way. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for for me, uh, my my dad was a huge wrestling fan when he was a kid back when wrestling was just the regional thing that you hear of uh uh old timers talk about uh where st louis was a big st louis and kansas city were both big regions in 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 wrestling uh and uh so he 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 followed it and when i was a kid we would put on the saturday morning event that used to be on regular tv for the longest time and i would watch that and that was kind of that was kind of one of our things that was one of our main things and as i got older he just like even if i wasn't watching the regular weekly event on tv whether it be raw or whatever um uh back in the day uh, he would always get the pay per view, mm. um, and so I. And then he would always also record it on on a VHS and like log it in the in the big cabinet that I've, <laughs> I've referred to, um, <laughs> that also contained many many pay per views, um, and uh, and so he would also. And, and then I really got back into it, honestly, in the spur of the creation of WCW and NWO. That was kind of the thing that brought me back in from a casual viewer to a very interested viewer, at which point every weekend I had was consumed by rewatching any tape that my dad had had bought when he bought the pay-per-views and then going to Schnooks and renting all of the VHSs uh, that were available to me and rewatching all of the old classic pay-per-views. Um, and then it was roughly late into high school, I would say, when, when it just kind of... I don't know if there was a spe- specific instance, a specific... <laughs> It, lead wrestler like i i know i initially wasn't into john cena i feel like his come up made it may have been right about when i was stopping to be fair i stopped around the same time you did that would have been a, like senior high school early college that uh range and i also like because i know I, my first year down here i, I just kind of stopped but i had a roommate who was older but my whole reason for stopping aside from losing interest was also i'm an adult now i can't be watching kid stuff like wrestling i can't play with Yu-Gi-Oh cards i'm going to college and then my roommates older than me like i think he was like 30 and he or like 29 and he was watching wrestling and so <laughs> like my second year of college i eventually just to be chilling with the roommate at the time he, I hate because he would be watching Raw on TV every week, and then one week I'm like, "What's going on here?" And then I ask him, and paid a little bit more attention. 
and then through playing the games and then being bored like 2009 ish i had a friend who had just moved out of town uh that i met down here and we were playing wow world of warcraft and after a while on mondays we decided just so we had some other background noise that we could talk about let's turn on wrestling got into rewatching it with him then the guy that's my roommate now had a birthday we're like you know what's cheap he used to watch wrestling back in the day like you he was old old school randy uh -huh. savage in them right uh there's the wrestling show in town wrestling's always better live let's get him to join and brought him ended up getting him back into the fold he started watching every week and he pretty much has made sure that even when I stopped watching it as regularly to this day, <laughs> he keeps me updated. So that's why I stayed as heavily and then talking with jazz as well. But yeah, so I stopped around the same time you did that early ruthless aggression era, or I guess, yeah, still early ruthless aggression era. Not mm -hmm. for me. So I agree. It, it, you know, it, it fades. It, yeah. it comes and it comes. But that's the beauty. That's the beauty about wrestling. All all it takes is a little bit of stuff that you actually that reminds you why you like it for you to just get sucked right back into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. But yeah. Um. So any other any other spots in, in so in spots this and standout or, or moments things, things you want to talk in about. this match, Sean. In general, I realized through this match, I had seen it here and there in some of his later matches, obviously. It's not like I wasn't expecting this out of Sean. But to the degree that it was, I am not surprised this motherfucker had a back injury that almost ended his career because he loves his over-the-ring ropes to the outside spots. He was clotheslined over him. He, like, backdropped Razor. Razor had one of those, too. But he had a lot of those getting tossed into the corner and flip over, fall out of the ring to the floor, doing a whole yep. bunch of shit like that. Uh, the clothesline, like you mentioned, in Diesel, that was a cool moment of him getting ejected, even though still probably shouldn't have. But that's just <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. I thought there were no rules. Earl, I know you don't like him cheating, but there's literally no rules, so it can't be cheating. <laughs> but Earl Hebner, if Earl Hebner ain't having it, he ain't having it. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's no rules, but you're not a participant in this match, and I can still ban you from a ring. Exactly. Him doing the, like, splashes. A lot of... I like the various off-the-ladder spots, like the splashes, the... To put the spl ladder in between him and splash onto the dude, yeah. a lot of those uh, razor, and then Ramon. a perfect roll out of it too. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, I think that's one of the coolest parts of that one for me. The what was it? Razor Ramon tosses Sean off the ladder and the ladder breaks. Okay, so immediate key difference between the that ladder match and modern day ladder matches. Only one ladder. Only one ladder in that building, they claim. They did not consider the fact that it might break. <laughs> <laughs> There's only the one ladder. And, yeah. and as much as I'm like, well, that would give the old school ladder matches more of a bonus because, you know, it's more focused on this is the weapon, the ladder of the match, as opposed to the ones that have like three or four. As that started to break, as they continued doing stuff, I'm like... That's why they have a ton of the things these days so yep. that you can break it and it'd be fine. <laughs> also, just because of the rule of power creep or escalation just with time and people needing more and more to get their dopamine fix, you're going to need more ladders as time goes on because you need to do more <laughs> stupid shit with ladders. Right. Uh, but that was <laughs> great. Uh, and obviously, the, the climax both on the ladder sean getting tossed off and getting tied up in the ropes another another classic move that he likes to pull out of his bag very rarely but it's but it's came in it's come in handy in like four key matches in his career uh i feel like that's another thing that uh Jer i used to see jericho do too much uh and i feel like he 
he's ripped so much of his life from Shawn Michaels, you know, in a wrestling ring. Um, but uh, that one, uh, I feel like that's I see that and that's pure. That is that like like those are Shawn Michaels to me. Like you said, the the spill over the corner out of the ring, um, a much rarer one, but like stealthily getting himself trapped in into into the ropes yeah and 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 selling the the trappedness of it it's, i was uh, more used to not necessarily spilling into the outside but let's say his corner spot where he'd hit the corner like if he was good to his shoulder driven into but he'd like flip up ragdoll and then flip right back down <laughs> Right, yeah, that's his older man version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a <laughs> rather than go yeah, the, all the way to the outside of the ring. Yeah, the <laughs> one going the, the going to the outside used to be every like that was a standard of every HBK match. At some point, the other dude was going to throw him out of the ring from, <laughs> yeah. from that from that spot. Which I can see a lot of the old heads at that time being like. Flopping around too much, making a mockery of the business. Everybody oh man, just like, I could yeah. see them thinking yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, the amount of the amount of times the old heads were mumbling probably during this during this match. That, it's like, the same thing people like, say like a lot about do. a lot of the matches you say, today. You could say Sparky. I mean, like every one of Shawn Michaels' first, other than I think maybe Hell in the Cell. I don't. I, I'm because. I, I, I feel like WWE at the time would have been the only avenue that could have constructed that big and giant of a thing. Who else is really doing that? But like these independent companies, the small outfits, I'm I'm sure the extreme focused outfits back in 1994 that were backyard affairs had done a ladder match. Sure. Yeah. But Go Come fuck now. yourself. Now Japan might have, like New Japan might have, right? But I don't. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, we're talking about us. We're talking about us. We're talking about mainstream media, mainstream I, American media. Uh, I'm talking about <laughs> WWE, WWF, WCW, um, uh, NWA back in the day, uh, uh, TNA, AEW now. Yeah. Those are the ones that made it to the point where they had a weekly cable program and monthly pay per views, and and were drawing. Uh, uh, that's 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 where my moniker stands. Yeah. Um, it's like in baseball. Like, don't be talking to me about your counting stats if they include your stint in the Australian Baseball League, motherfucker. Get out of here. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Uh, uh, I'm, I, I want to hear MLB, and maybe I will entertain uh, entertain your your Japanese pro. I'm about to say, league. what about the Japanese league? Because apparently we don't got it no more. We don't got what? Baseball. I heard oh, we got baseball. bodied in the. Uh... Yeah, we we, we embodied. bodied. It was America. a it was a great game, uh, but no, Team Japan, Team Japan won. Uh, but but you know they were also the heavy favorites, so. Uh, we were probably third in the ranking, although we assembled a great team. We didn't really have pitching. What are we uh, doing? No American pitchers, really. It's we really like, hard. We should be like basketball at the Olympics. It's it's really hard tournament wise for pitchers, protect particularly pitchers who throw really hard, to participate in the WBC. There's really no good time of year for them to be like ramped up to playing speed and be able to throw without hurting themselves mm-hmm. and and not already pitching in the major leagues true so like you it, there, there's no there's no real good time for it unfortunately like would i have loved a team usa that had the starters of garrett cole max scherzer and justin verlander and zach wheeler and aaron nola and uh, uh yeah i would i would have loved that dustin may all these ridiculous fireballers with like 20 inches of vertical move, horizontal movement. Absolutely. This has become a baseball nerd podcast. I'm taking it over. (laughs) (laughs) 
Tangent, Anyways, hypotenuse. But yeah, so WrestleMania obviously 10. the climax Shawn of Michaels, the match and the match of finish. Road. Yeah. Like I said, I was more surprised that Sean lost. And I was like, wait, Razor won? And then he does the iconic two belts shot that's usually used to reference his time as Razor Ramon. And yeah. I'm like, that was this ladder match. <laughs> okay. This makes sense now. I guess I knew that he would after all. <laughs> but I didn't realize, I didn't put five and six together to be like, oh yeah. He's got one and one in each hand, or 11. Anyway, so that was that match. Um, did you have any other spots in the match you wanted to mention? Because I know there's a few. Or uh, I mean, no, there's there, there's uh, there, there's 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 some standards. Um, uh, I, we we never get a proper razor's edge. That's that's the one maybe little disappointing factor of of True. watching a watching a Razor Ramon Scott Hall match and not getting a razor's edge um the closest we got uh, was we don't even really get a proper him. sweet chin music um uh well he fakes it he psychs it out and ends up doing a pile driver yeah um, well that's uh, what but, it was he thought he was going we thought he was going to razor's edge and he pile drove him you're right because um, king's like the ultimate insult beat him with his own move <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love your i love your king impersonation um uh yeah and i would say there's there's all of these moments that like you said in your expectations in if you played it side by side with like i can think of towards the end of my viewing era uh i believe it would have been the hardys versus edge and christian kind of ladder match um uh yeah those are the names i associate with ladders yeah that, the tlc that's, crew right yeah, yeah yeah they're 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 not gonna they're not going to compare it looks it's gonna look like a couple of old men playing with a ladder in comparison um but this is these are these are innovative things that like like uh, that said like, it was very good they they did a lot more with the ladder than i was expecting Mm-hmm. Because and because I knew these guys, or especially Sean, were technical geniuses when it comes to wrestling. I expected a lot more of the match to just be man versus man, which it kind of was for a good chunk early on. And then once they introduced the ladder into it as a weapon, they used that fucking yeah, ladder. Just kinda, it's to the point where there was just one moment where they were they were doing their tired bit. Uh, which we'll get into in uh, also in comparison um, uh, uh, when they're do- when they're doing their tired bit and Sean literally just shoves it over on him. <laughs> he's just like like he gets up and he looks and he's I, I think because it, it's that moment that he's it, it's kind of the only botch in the match uh, where Michaels is supposed to drop kick the ladder with Scott on it. And and it and it wobbles, but it doesn't fall. And Scott's just kind of got to be like, oh, I lost my balance and fall. And that's the only moment that kind of rubs a little. Yeah. Um, uh, but but he Sean turns it by getting up and doing kind of like a, a subtle like little like, oh, uh, ladder's still up. He's positioned kind of. Hold on. Let me just tweak it. Yep. <laughs> and it just lets the fucking thing fall, right? It looks like it might even have it just whacked his head. Uh, uh, but but. I love how he, one of the times he does something with the ladder where it falls on, on Scott and then like bounces where he like hits Scott with it and it falls on him. <laughs> I forget exactly what it was, but something he did with the ladder later is Sean falls down and the ladder falls on him almost immediately. And Vince is like, that's what you get for Harker Mouse fair play. <laughs> oh, this is oh, unfortunate well, game. S- Scott this. Hall Scott Hall does the like the the uh what what do you call that one? The leg Oh okay. moonsault, the leg suplex thing uh-huh. where he rockets Sean into the ladder outside oh. the ring. And then and then and then it Sean falls and the ladder falls on him. Okay, maybe something like that. That might be it. But I do remember just the it's a funny little <laughs> and just like, oh no! Worst thing ever! 
uh, and then the like the uh, I think you you might have mentioned it the splash yeah uh, that's that's kind of an iconic yeah there's a splash off the, there's a splash off the ladder and then there's him using the ladder as he splashes as well there's like right, two right, of them. Right, right. Yeah, we don't we don't get a lot of sign- we don't get signatures really in this match. There's a very brief m- kind of sweet chin music during a during like a run yeah. moment. Um but like we don't get Razor's Edge, we don't get a proper sweet chin music. We don't get a, a elbow from Michaels. We don't get a flying forearm from Michaels. <laughs> Which is funny cuz uh, he does do jumping. Like yeah. he, he could have easily just done an elbow off. In fact, I've seen the iconic splash that you mentioned, but in your head, it, it was always an elbow. It was an elbow. I'm like, he's elbowing <laughs> off of this, but even King's like, or Vince is like, he's got to hit him with a splash. I'm like, wait, the splash was just his thing at one point. <laughs> I was used to the elbow. I, I believe he still had both in his repertoire at that point, the forearm and the flying forearm and the elbow, um, off the rope, but it, maybe not. Um, uh, I will say, uh, Razor uh, Scott Hall gives a punch early on, like just like a running, yeah, punch right to the chin. That Sean, another another key Sean sell is like that wad of spit that always just flies at the perfect moment. Um, uh, that one, that one was a that that felt like a really hard, hard punch. Um, and uh and then yeah i love the ending like you said the iconic little like that's 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 razor that is razor ramon right there <laughs> yeah that was that was great so i guess if i talk about that particular match before we move on to the other was or if i'm just talking about the match itself i i enjoyed it i really did i'm happy i saw it. it was a great classic match it felt old school it had all the right nostalgia little moments I love the way they focused because you said it was the era before vignettes were, you know, normalized like they were. Uh, and the commentators did a good job telling them. I did. I also love the old dynamic of heel commentator and face commentator. Nowadays, everybody's just got their own superstars. They may fall into that heel versus face role, but a lot of times they're like, I may be the heel commentator, but I like this one face because my character would like this one face <laughs> and mm-hmm. vice versa. Uh, so it's a little bit more great, which I guess is more realistic, but I also have a nostalgia for just King always coming up with excuses for the villain in the <laughs> match and how they're technically the one screwed over. Uh the story like i said the storytelling was good i am happy to finally have experienced the match and i did like i also like the way it ended with sean being tied up in the ropes and that's why he could do it as opposed to him just being unconscious and having to pretend to be knocked out long enough which nothing wrong with that latter part (laughs) <laughs> but L-A-T-T-E-R. Nothing wrong with the latter thing of them being knocked unconscious long enough to get a belt. Clearly, it's been the formula for the last 30 years. Uh, <laughs> but I did like the little... But no, it's fun, especially because the first, the first match, you'd think that w- like you'd think that would just be... That would be the obvious go-to. Yeah, of like, like all right, razors so, edged or yeah, thrown off the top. Exactly. Give me the belt. Yeah, razors edge him outside the ring or something like that, and then crawl in and climb up. Uh, but no, they went with something a little odd. Uh, uh, it's it's a hard sell because uh, because the ladder is falling apart, and Scott is having a hard time climbing it. Probably afraid that it's about ready to crumple underneath him. <laughs> That's about um, the only thing that made it a little bit worse of a moment. But it was like. You gotta do what you gotta do. I get yeah, that. I get what y'all were aiming for. Live TV happened to y'all on that. In this instance, you yeah. got hit by live TV, but that gives it a bit more of a realistic sense that you can see that ladder was falling the fuck apart. Like it mm-hmm. had been through some shit, so it's not like they faked getting hit by the ladder. No, they got hit by that ladder. They got the ladder slammed on them and etc. And you could see it had as many war wounds as they did. Uh, 
So that was cool. And yeah, all in all, really enjoyed the match. I'm sure you did as well, considering. Yeah, of course. <laughs> all right, so. That... On to this garbage. On no, to I'm this. <laughs> I'm kidding. What else ba- are we watching? Or should we say basura, given the a certain flavor of this match? No. <laughs> um, so, I was trying to think when presented with the idea that I would give a match back. I was thinking relatively on the fly. I could have just easily been like, yeah, we'll do this down the line and I think about the matches. That's not what I did. I really liked the idea, so I wanted something right off the bat. And I'm trying to think, what's something modern day that I really enjoyed? And I was thinking AEW, because I've been watching more of that than I have WWE as of late. And I was like, what's one of the better matches in there? Well, it's gotta be something involving the elite who are the E in AEW. So stable of four, but primarily three. Kenny Omega, who many have listed as um, um, quote unquote objectionably or objectively the best wrestler in the world right now. He gets a lot of five-star matches and he's really good. I've got, I've had the pleasure of meeting the guy on numerous occasions. Really cool dude. Nice. Um, that said, he also is in this, in this stable is one of the arguably best tag teams in the world. The Young Bucks, who, while I don't necessarily care for their characters, they're fucking amazing. They also have a shit ton of five-star matches. The Young Bucks, I'm like, and AEW is a company that focuses a lot on tag teams. That's their thing. They love tag teams over there. Tag teams, factions, Mm -hmm. oh my god. Vince loves his big people. AEW loves their tag teams. Okay. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'll put it that way. Yeah. Uh, So, and with the Young Bucks being at one point executive vice presidents of the company, of course, they're going to also help pump up their tag team division. But anytime they are in the ring with this group of two brothers of Lucha of the Lucha variety, Ray Phoenix and Penta El Cerro Miedo or Pinto Oscuro, Penta Gan Jr., the matches are almost always magnifique. So I tried to think of the best match or one of the best matches that I had remembered in recent time and I thought about their cage match. Had I had a bit more time to think, I would have done it more thematically and just had their Escalera de la Muerte match. Ladder. Ladder of death. But it's still between the two teams that they had before this cage match, like a year before this cage match, that was also pretty fucking ridiculous. Because at the time, they were one of the like, they also were in that argument for best you know, five or so tag teams in the world was right. the Lucha Brothers. So I'm like, this cage match is going to be, I just remembered that. So I'm like, you know what? This would be a good example of modern day where wrestling is modern day. Not necessarily modern day ladder, but modern day wrestling, a match that had me like speechless as I watched it the first time. Mm hmm. It was compounded with it being part of a whole other night because it was also kind of like a WrestleMania night for AEW. They're all out pay-per-view, I believe. So I'm like, yeah, let's watch this. So that's what I did. Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers cage match from 2021, I believe, during the first year of that. I picked it. And another reason I picked it is at the time, I followed AEW from the like when it started that so that was when i was really into aew had watched the story and was more invested the young bucks had had the title for like a year damn near and people were tired of them same thing and kenny was the champion uh at that time as well the heel they, they the elite had decided to go in there like heel turn like let's actually abuse our power of being top in the company right type deal because they didn't really that first year um but yeah so got into the match i sent you the vignette and stuff but i didn't know if you had heard of either of these teams or anything so what were you expecting i guess we'll flip it around now 
Um, I didn't. I didn't know what to expect from AEW. I hadn't seen any of it. Uh, I knew. I knew of the basics of AEW that like Cody Rhodes uh, was kind of like a founder guy of it, along with you know the financial backers. Mm-hmm. Um, the Cohen family. Uh, uh, um, I knew that Chris Jericho was currently heavily involved in it. I had heard about Sting wrestling again there, and that they were kind of just they they were they were like re- recycling some some WCW um, older dudes. Uh, yeah, fa- like oh, yeah, like nostalgia uh, kind of things. Um, and then beyond that, I didn't know about their like. They're young kids, you know the yeah. the mid card stuff, the one that's the 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 stuff that's really yeah. filling out the night, you know, because that's the same with uh, earlier with the match that we watched. Like these aren't that 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 wasn't the main event for that night was Bret Hart versus Yokozuna, where Bret Hart did his damnedest for twenty minutes to crawl around Yokozuna's body. While he, while he while he exasperated all over the place, um, uh, like this was the match of the night. Yeah, this and, wasn't and, the main event of that night either. Yeah, I assume not. Like I pictured, I pictured that that was a similar case. Is that like the the from what I could imagine of hearing about the Stings and the Jerichos of the world? Nothing against Jericho directly, but he's of a certain age now, and so he's probably not doing some of those great matches that he's doing when he yeah. was the first unified heavyweight champion that we were just talking about off mic undisputed. earlier. Undisputed. Uh, undisputed, that's right. Um but uh beyond that I didn't I didn't really know. I didn't really know. I figured it was going to be um some 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 crazy shit uh cuz I like that's that's usually what is is deemed, you know, great wrestling now. Uh, and that's not to say it's it's bad or anything, but like that's like it just seems like a lot of the wrestling, a lot of the big matches now are 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 just. Well, I think you called it earlier, spot fest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know that 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 kind of feels like. Uh, I, I knew that that was kind of already the vibe of modern wrestling over at at wwe a little bit and like crazy um i was curious if they were because i knew wwe especially maybe four years ago or whenever when AEW was created and i wasn't positive where this how long ago this match lived um i was curious i knew wwe was really kids focused at one point in their recent timeline so I was very curious if AEW intentionally went like I would assume the alternate would be like okay so we're gonna go hard and then yeah Tony Schiavone at one point was like the bullshit I can't I can't stand for this shit shit it's just shit as the, as the crowd chants you sick fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah no they uh, definitely did that they wanted to have and part of their charm to go with your statement was it. While not attitude error, nothing's ever going to be the attitude error. But it had a attitude error feel in the sense that people did have that TV fourteen style, like we coming at you. That's our rating. We're not TV PG. And actually, WWE has also started changing their rating back to TV fourteen. They're not as a. Uh, they don't have yeah, people that's yelling what I've kind shit. Of heard. They don't have people yelling shit every week on mm-hmm. the screen, but. They are adulting back up, despite the fact that they still want to act like AEW is not competition. Which, I mean, eh, they might have been justified. We'll get into that on some other time. But 2021, they definitely were competition. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, we'll go ahead and get into the match, as we mentioned, what you were expecting uh initial yeah. stuff with you um uh the you know the the lucha entrance which is not is not a new thing i i i, I for a second i wanted to old man it and then i was like wait a minute bill 
this is this is a thing this is this is a pay-per-view event <laughs> somebody's gonna get a live musical entrance uh it's happened since you were a kid uh 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 but yeah, I was. I think my note was the lucha entrance was cool, but I can't decide if I want it or not. Um, <laughs> yeah, to be fair, that was the first time that happened, and like I said, Young Bucks had had that title for a minute, and I, there's an episode or whatever we want where we talked about it too, like right when it happened, but when they came out like at first i thought the same thing as you we got some random dude here zero miedo animo arrow meet us in the ring we the mexicans and i'm like okay this is unnecessary because that wasn't their theme song at all it was some other thing where it was the guy was like lucha bros mexican sarah miedo but this guy had a whole actual like rap song that he's doing live and they got some extra musical guests on top of him doing the other verses and i'm like what is this but then these motherfuckers come out and they got the fucking aztec or mayan or central american ancient head garb on and then they start like posing while the guy's doing the chorus again the cerro metal animo arrow and they're posing and there's just ah, and then fire and fucking fireworks come out and i'm like I turned to my roommate and I was like, me thinks the Young Bucks lose tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, we neither of us entertained the idea of the Young Bucks losing going into that pay-per-view. We're like, damn, it sucks for the Lucha Bros that they still won't be able to win the tag team championships. Because we like them. Because Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix. But they were like, we like them, so we're like, they're not going to win. But then they came out like that. I'm like, oh, no, they can't lose like this. Right. They, like they WrestleMania win. 12 when Shawn Michaels enters from the rafters <laughs> and then Bret Hart as the champion has to enter second and just has a normal entrance. And you're like, all right, well, uh, so something's happening tonight. <laughs> I think there was only one WrestleMania where everybody that had a special entrance lost. Oh, they did that on purpose. <laughs> there was one WrestleMania. I think it was the one where Taker lost too. I think it was that WrestleMania where everybody who had a special entrance lost. <laughs> but that was not the case that night as we'll get into but i thought i'm like no they went full-on aztec ancient we're invoking the spirits of our ancestors to kill you today look at the fire this was not part of our entrance before the sparks yeah. the fire not part of their entrance they were just cool and came down to the ring while penta just kind of fucking gestured at the camera just chilling and ray phoenix is like not ray mysterio but i am <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> that just was their thing that they walked to the ring and then this time they're doing this i'm like there's no way the young bucks beat this they are in i mean their entrance in comparison <laughs> looks awkward it looks so <laughs> awkward and weak it's so think, weird. I think they didn't even have their whole raining money gimmick that they usually have because they're the young bucks. <laughs> so they have like fake money that comes down when they do their pose. Instead of fireworks, it was like money. But I don't even think they did that this time. So it was just like awkward and they had their entourage with them that bloated John Wa John Waters looking motherfucker <laughs> in the pink suit. Don Callis, the yeah. <laughs> He's, I think he was someone big at Impact slash maybe even WCW back in the day, like backstage type deal. Like he's one of those Eric Bischoff types character wise. Okay. Uh, and he was part of the reason why Kenny Omega was collecting belts from various foundations during that time. That's the other reason why we thought they weren't losing because the whole idea with the Elite was Kenny had five different world championships. Like he had the TNA championship, the AEW championship, the New Japan. I'm not sure if he got New Japan. He might have held it for like a brief period just so he could say he had it. And like another one from like one of the indie things. And he was just collecting belts, cheating with Don Callis and the Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks were cheating to keep their tag team championships. So we're like, they're not. 
but no, they came out that entrance. But yeah, so yes, the entrances were what they were. Yes. Um. Uh, oh yeah, go ahead. The uh what was I gonna say? Lucha Brothers. So, how about the potential drinking game I mentioned to you before this? <laughs> how did you feel about Cerro Miedo <laughs> and the constant Cerro Miedo? <laughs> <laughs> Because by then I was used to to him just doing it like eighty times a match, but that is a nice way to like kill yourself with a drinking game. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so like some other things that stood out to you from the match. We'll go ahead. I'll let you. Um. So uh, I I know I have a note er- for early on in the in the match. There was a there was a face kick to the guy wedged. Uh, uh, between the uh, between the cage and the mat, uh, face kick to one of the luchadors that uh, looked gross. It looked gross. It was it looked like a really fucking hard kick. It was just a punt because uh, his head was so low uh, in comparison. That one was nasty. Um, yeah. In general, the opening of the match until they start to in my mind get a little tired okay as you mentioned uh I, and i'm I, and i may not be using it correctly but this is how i would use it a spot fest is going on at the beginning of the match that feels way too choreographed for me i could see that it it feels like they were back there for the last three days being like, and then you do this, and then I do this, and then you do this, and then I do this, there, and then everybody got their parts? Okay, let's run through it. I do this, then you do if this. There's then I, a, if there's a detriment to be had about their matches, it's those. It's that aspect of it where some of the moments are a little, and I'm using a little to be nice, but some of the moments are a little too choreographed. That said, obviously having watched wrestling for as long as, or in, into the modern era as I have, I've become a bit more, okay, wrestling's choreographed, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And right. even with it being choreographed, they pull that shit off. Like, a lot of the shit they pull off, especially Ray Phoenix in general. Like, that's the Ray, that's the shorter Lucha brother with the gold mask, the Ray right. Mysterio-looking motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That dude, and half the shit he does, I'm just like, I don't even care if you choreographed and they had to let you do well, this. Yeah, I, I get, I get, I get, I good. get wrestling is choreographed. I get no, that. No, I'm saying, um, I'm saying, but even like, if they had to, pl- I agree that it was too choreographed. Like, some of the things even looked too choreographed yeah it's like 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 everything's choreographed in 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 the in the world of wrestling that i watched most of the time there's always exceptions to the rule but most of the time it's kind of basic bullet pointed out sometimes almost nothing it's 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 you have the finish and there are wrestlers that do that still okay uh, and, and 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 throughout the match, you are improvising with your partner and doing this dance kind of on the fly. And fig- and if you do have bullet points, it is a complete improvised act to figure out how you get from A to B to C to D to the finisher. Um, uh, that is choreographed in that way. Yeah. The beginning of this felt like it was scripted. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's just the delineation that I wanted to I wanted to put on that. Um, uh, of of it, it 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 just it it felt and and I think it was a little uh, it was a little too fast for me. Um, and, and not you know not like a oh it's it's just uh, like I don't know moments to having moments to breathe so the next moment can sell harder 
Uh, and so there was there was moments on moments on moments on moments to where I wasn't you're not able to keep up or really take in or appreciate a really fucking hard hit that somebody just took because there's already two other ones that happened over there. <laughs> and um, uh, so in the in the first 10 minutes of the match, that's kind of the vibe I'm going on uh, is like is like, man, this feels it's 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 going too quick and 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 most of the time when somebody's not when they're not doing like when they're not selling something and on the ground and all that uh like when they're going in motion it it just feels so scripted um but that that starts to break away at about at about like i would say the halfway mark but i like i said i'm i'm curious if that's only because they're they're just starting to get exhausted at that point from almost being in a full sprint like i wonder if their body could hold it they would probably do that spot fest that they're doing at the up, at the front of just like a full dead sprint of, of what stuff if, what if i told you that at some point this year i didn't end up seeing every match in it but there was a best of seven series between the elite and uh, six man tag matches between the elite the young bucks with kenny omega as well versus Death Triangle, which consists of the Lucha Brothers and a guy that goes by Peck. He's a bastard. That's literally what the announcer says when he comes out. He's like, he is a bastard. Peck. Angry British dude that can also flip in like a fucking luchador. But bottom line is they had a best of seven series of matches between these two teams where like every week they were going up for the triple cut they had just introduced the trios titles or whatever <laughs> so yeah they 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 love just flipping around and having a lot of that which is good and bad it's bad because of the whole like okay a lot of this you have to agree that this is a choreographed spot and there's even moments later in the match when they're purposely portraying that they're tired and they still have a have a obviously scripted choreographed moment like the circle of super kicks <laughs> the circle of super kicks is a standout moment there are a couple moments in in the later uh, and uh and you know and it's not to say that what we watched on my end is perfect i just see it as perfect because it's from my childhood uh but i acknowledge that it has flaws i'm just not these eyes are not going to see those flaws, no matter how much you tell me about them. Um, uh, um, uh, but this, I have no emotional connection to, so fuck it. Um, <laughs> um, there, there's a spot later where, where yeah, they're 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 like, uh, it's one of the luchadors is 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 absolutely exhausted. Oh, oh, he's so exhausted, and he's climbing himself up, and then. He's got to do his next spot, and that spot requires a full dead sprint. And he sprint, <laughs> and he immediately goes into a full sprint and bounces off the ropes and does his big flippy thing. And I'm just like, ah, Ray Phoenix. But you killed, like, you killed uh, the illusion. But yeah, then there's other stuff in there. There are some good things in the match, though. Like I oh, know there are. There are. The, there, are the, there are. There are. There are a lot of great things. When they introduce the sneaker into the match. Now, uh -huh. obviously you came from outside. I don't know if you've noticed, but part of the Young Bucks theme is a guy yelling, Super Kick Party! The young, the young Bucks are they're one of those teams that heard old heads complaining that too many people do super kicks this day because there are too many people doing super kicks these days back when they all grew up idolizing Shawn michaels <laughs> exactly but when you talk about doing too many super kicks the young bucks are one of those teams that exemplify doing too many super kicks and also i think one of their finishers or signatures involved well there's the signature the bte trigger which is an evolution of uh, Kenny Omega's V Trigger. Yes, named after a mechanic out of Street Fighter V. But V Trigger, um, which is a knee to the head normally, but they've got 
the double knee. They also have the sandwich with the super kicks and just doing a lot of super kicks. So when they pulled out that sneaker and you had the Jordans or whatever brand shoe with the thumbtacks on the bottom, this is why the crowd started chanting, you sick fuck, you sick fuck. Cause they're like, they're gonna super kick this dude with a thumbtack shoe. <laughs> and they do. They first they have do. the they, now, and like I said, yeah, they have a lot of too many spots and stuff, but they do also try to tell some stories in there. Like they had the bigger brother Pentagon get in front of Ray's face to protect him from the initial thing. Like, no, now don't hit him. That if, you're cool. gonna, if you're gonna boot somebody, boot me. I'm the bigger brother. I'm protecting my younger brother. And stuff like that is probably why I remember this match more fondly, despite its faults. Um, because in the moment, I was getting wrapped up in what little story there was. Um, and yeah. The, 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 but there were moments that took you out of How it. can the Lucha Brother swanton bomb both of his competitors and his brother and his brother pops right back up and 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 does and does a co-op finisher signature move while the other two are are like on the ground on effects from getting from getting splashed. <laughs> that was that was what I was like, what? <laughs> but you know, that, adrenaline's that was, a hell of a thing. Adrenaline's a hell of a drug. Adrenaline um, does work. Look at Crank. You know, guys, Crank Two should not be possible. Dude fell out of a helicopter and then <laughs> I just don't. That was just an odd. It was just an odd choice for me. Like I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't have, like if you want that moment why not just have that lucha brother splash both the two the, dudes the the I yeah guess. the the, You're the, about like the young the bucks Start rather the, yeah the rather than splashing literally all three of them i think i guess the idea behind all three was he's holding the two of them to be splashed i guess yeah and then because when he was only holding one the other guy tried to take him down from the top and he's like nah fuck you finish it now climb back up all right ah. but yeah the fact that they immediately got up to pin but like, one two three but yeah that was my first thought was like oh i thought like because i was so hyped for it when he got up to the root when he got up to the top and then i don't know it kind of fell flat for me and i i was just like oh why didn't he I yeah. feel like it would have been better if he would have splashed both of the bucks or just one of them from the top. That would have been a really sweet moment. But uh, I, it's not. It's, it's not that I disliked it. I was just like, ah, that's a. That was an odd choice. Like I, 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 I I'm not sure about that. Because then you also have to have, because you also want that to be the finisher of your match. That's the thing that makes it an odd choice. Because you want that to be part in tandem of your finisher, the other brother that just got splashed has to bounce right back up while the other two have to sell that they're hurt from the splash. When if it was you could have had that same spot 10 minutes sooner and then and then that older brother just gets to like route like, yeah, older brother yeah. is riling in pain, but so are both of the bucks. Like, yeah. we'll take that kind of thing. Um, I feel like that would have been a really cool spot because then it's like yeah. I will a say sacrifice least, play. I, yeah, I will say at least while the while the pin's happening, the, it's not like the other one couldn't move. He was being held down by Phoenix. So it wasn't like he's incapacitated and he's letting the three count happen, though. Phoenix still went over to hold him down Right, as but well. that was also still... That was after that was after they already performed a a, a different finish. Like they they had time to to uh, uh, you know both brothers get up and then they perform a a combo move on one of the guys right and then they and then one of them starts to one of them pins him and the other one goes and covers the other Omega brother to be like no you're not interfere or not omega yeah, um, young, uh, young buck jackson uh, technically is uh, their last uh, name they are brothers uh, though yeah the, the other the one the other one gets like mauled 
And he's like, no, you're not, you're not stopping the, the pin this time kind of thing. Um, so there's still a moment where he has to sell like, gotcha. oh, I've just been yeah. splashed. Oh, let me get up slowly kind of thing. Yeah. I, like I said, it was just, it's me being hypercritical of the match because I'm, I'm watching it with a fine tooth comb. No, that's fine. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, I feel like, I feel like that spot, you either could have put it earlier in the match and then the brother could have sold the effects of the splash and that would have made it an even cooler moment because the brother's making his, his a second sacrifice play. First, he takes the thumbtacks and then he takes the splash so that so that little brother can splash both yeah. of the bucks. I, now I do kind of I, I and you're right. If he would have just pinned off of the splash, also without yeah, I mean, the yeah, extra move, if, if the younger yeah. brother would have just gone straight into one of the pins while the older older brother sold the effects of the splash, that would have been really cool for me. It's 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 how like like if you watch it and re, if you watch it again, it, just that moment. That older brother bounces back up to his feet so fucking fast after getting splashed <laughs> because they have to go maybe because they're trying to make it the finisher. Maybe it's and so like, they have to go straight into that tandem move. Maybe it's like Scott Summers and Alex Summers. The powers don't work on each other <laughs> <laughs> because they're brothers. Their powers right. don't work on each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 There you go. his power that's, definitely that's is jumping is. off of shit. So, <laughs> oh, I'm immune because I'm your brother. No. <laughs> I'm a, that's probably the, what it is. <laughs> that's probably what it is. Um, but yeah, I did like, like I said, one of the few things they did in this match that was good though was after the Lucha Brothers win, or at least I thought it was good after the win, mm -hmm. the moment that they had. It felt like it was an accomplishment for them to me because of the way they sold finally winning over the Young Bucks. Dude got yeah. his kids to come out of the crowd and got the whole sell them. He's covered oh, man. in his yeah. blood. Is, his that, is, that their, is that their first American championship? I think so, you know? yeah. I mean, that's got to be a huge deal. That's yeah. got to be a huge deal. Anytime, I don't I don't know if that is selling it. I, that, that could very easily, every wrestler there could could tell me that that's not selling at all that that's 100 percent my genuine human react like i, I don't want to keep bringing oh, no. him up but that he's my probably... continual reference wrestlemania 12 when sean is declared the winner of the iron man match the way he he's on his knees and he's i i ha, uh, i i the image is forever locked the, in my the, brain the, 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 the boyhood dream has come true yeah he's he's holding the belt like this and staring into it and saying saying something directly to the center of that belt and i think that is 100 percent genuine that's not I, I do that's think, not him acting anything i do think a lot of the first championships are like that but i'm just saying it was a nice little touch to the match oh yeah it was a good it, yeah i like that i like that as well by the way the lucha brothers start a trend that i call going full mexican and you don't and essentially you don't want to fight a, me a mexican wrestler when they've gone full mexican which is when their intro changes up for the pay-per-view and they start ass teching it up like fully like there's a girl thunder rosa who had a similar not quite Here's no, she. I think she had a special person singing her thing, and instead of just painting half her face like with Dia de los Muertos stuff, she painted her whole face, came out with like a fucking Mexican themed garb. I'm pretty sure that night because they were in like Texas, her hometown, but or not her hometown, but very close, you know what I mean. She's Home Mexican, state. she's clearly Mexican as well, right. you know, but she just came out like, oh no, she went full Mexican, she went in tonight. I, I saw this with the Lucha Brothers, and it was true it's what happened they tapped into 100 percent of their power this is anime rules it's the final form it's not me being discriminatory it's me stating fact that when they fully embrace their heritage you are screwed they are unstoppable viva la raza and all that um i've said it i've said it on this show before that one of my favorite things in the world in entertainment is a person or thing who has seemingly reached the end of their rope. They've seemingly inched, reached the end of their tank of fuel. 
they're the the they have maxed out the amount of power output that they can provide and then something inside them breaks and they go a little bit farther like usually in anime it's something it's like no <laughs> yeah um but uh sure and that, that, that absolutely thing yeah yeah that, that absolutely that imply <laughs> that that could absolutely happen in wrestling it has happened on many occasions like, like that's a cornerstone of, <laughs> of, of, of a baby face match of like a standard baby face match is is that right there um uh so so yeah the, the, this kind of shit plays plays right right into my right into my soul um uh, I, I will say, even though I, I know I harp, I harped on some negative parts. I loved the back half of this match. I really did. There were really only two parts that rubbed up against me. It was the the spot I already told you about of the splash, and really, I I love the idea of it. I just wish the timing was a little different on it. And then, as you already mentioned, the the round robin of punches and stuff. But I mean, that's when you think about it really that it's 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 is it any different than like just a 1v1 when they're like Wa-pa! get hit Wa-pa! <laughs> the boo get hit the boo <laughs> yeah boo! you know <laughs> yeah um, is it really much different <laughs> no um uh, it's a little goofy, but you know, like you, it's, it's it's wrestling. I feel like, though I enjoyed the match, I do feel like it's a symptom of what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about the ladder matches of or wrestling modern day in general has become a symptom of diminishing returns from things. And people needing more whatever to get that dopamine. Like, you do still get your slower paced, you know, technical masterpiece matches as well mixed in there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what the kids and the Zoomers and stuff like is that constant, you know, this is the TikTok generation. What? Seven seconds or less, motherfucker, go. What? What's the shit? So they constantly need to do that all the time is like, yeah, <laughs> excitement. So it's a victim of that as well as just, this is a cage match. How many fucking cage matches have there been? What should we do to do <laughs> differently? How about a shoe with thumbtacks on it? All right, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> thumbtack yeah. super kick. As well as the part where they had his face and they would pull it on the uh, mask to the into the shoe, just Arr! yeah, that was nasty. Speaking of timing, I do wish he would have waited till after that to start bleeding, or at least till after the sacrifice, because he kind of bladed and was bleeding like a minute before that happened. And by a minute, I mean like almost sixty seconds. But it was like right before they got the shoe. I'm like. If you would have waited till you I got think, the shoe. I think it was the younger one who took a power bomb uh-huh. or something on the edge of the apron that looked gross. Yeah, it Ray looked, Phoenix. It looked inappropriate. It looked unsafe. It looked like a move done by a bad wrestler in that moment. Like I know, I know you said that these these tag guys, and more specifically the the guy that reps them, uh, Kenny Omega, is like known to be one of the one of the top tiers um, uh, in the game right now. Uh, a a couple of those a couple of those things those guys were doing did not look like they were making uh, safe decisions for their partners, and that's always that's another. That's another feather that I put in the cap of Shawn Michaels um, is that is that he was always concerned for the safety of his partner. And uh, a bunch of wrestlers will tell you that he's he, he they, they never felt concerned in in a in a in a match with Shawn. So that that was one thing is like it looked and I like the the announcers almost felt like they were almost breaking character breaking the wall yeah. to be like 
Now is he okay? They have a lot of five star matches and stuff, but I will say they're more just the match itself within the context of itself was five star as opposed to oh they are tech. I don't want to say they're not technically sound because they should have a shit ton more injuries would have the stunts that they pull. Like, that best of seven, I didn't realistically think it would get to seven matches. It ended up going to, by the way, seven matches because, of, of course, course it, did. it was a best of seven, even though Death Triangle went up 3-0. Okay, so there's going to be seven matches? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's like, so, I'm like, there's no way this gets to seven without somebody getting injured. But it did. I was surprised just because they go out there and just AEW as a whole has a lot of people in there that don't care about their bodies. They, 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 you know, they're here for a good time, not a long time. That's Darby Allen in a nutshell so much that Ibn, who's been on the show, tweeted that one week during the Darby Allen Dynamite match. Oh, by Dynamite, I mean the show. Uh, the that's their weekly show instead of Nitro. It's Dynamite because it's still on TNT and shit or Turner Networks. Mm-hmm. So during some random Dynamite match, Darby Allen was doing Darby Allen things, and Ibn tweets out like, "Darby's here for you know a good time, not a long time." Ahead, like the next day, Darby Allen tweets out something like. It's not going to be a long ride, but it's going to be a hell of a ride. (laughs) It's like, well, there you go. Even he's admitting I'm probably at the age I'm going when I'm 30, you know, retired and all that shit, like Eminem said. But (laughs) yeah, so that's that that is a knock that AEW has. And I've even mentioned it in the past. I'm like, as entertaining as it is, because I'm here for watching the matches, keep putting yourselves at risk of my entertainment please at the same time i'm also concerned for your safety there are some things that i think somebody in the back should be like i don't know if y'all do that spot tonight (laughs) there there's plenty of that but there's a lot of freedom for the wrestlers over there all enablers wrestling like the match the, the 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 match that i showed is something where you're probably going to be waking up tomorrow pretty sore like you're 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 planning for tomorrow to be like all right don't book anything for monday because sunday is wrestlemania and i'm doing that ladder match probably just gonna stay in bed all day the one that you played is like risk of death eight times So yeah, but it, they don't die. The, 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 so the, the, there's a technical skill involved in not right. dying. Well, no, that? I was gonna say so. There's there is absolutely a considerable jump up in the in the twenty years, um, uh, thirty years since uh, uh, since uh, in between these two shows. Yeah. So Mari, we have gone. What feels like a long time. Yes. How do you feel about this experiment? What do you think? I enjoyed, Old versus new. I enjoyed the experiment. Like I said, I enjoyed both matches. I I liked the Young Bucks match more than you did, but I can see why, because I also thoroughly enjoyed the Sean match. I can see why that's held in better regard. And also, like I said, watching the two helps point out the flaws between old and new and how the new just doesn't have it anymore and how old we should never go back to those mullets (laughs) i don't think i realized that everybody had a mullet just everybody except for earl yeah (laughs) but there were a lot of mullets if there was a shot of jerry guess what jerry would have had A a damn mullet I think I think Vince would have been the only one who would have still been working. I think Vince has rocked the exact same haircut for like sixty years. Um, speaking um, of speaking of Jerry, Andy Kaufman's finally becoming a Hall of Famer this weekend. 
Really? Yeah. Andy Kaufman joining the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame. One of the okay. most uh, positions. Because they, they ran out. One of the most positions and titles you could have. What yeah. kind of title? Is it good or bad? I don't know. But there, there, there's enough people with it. He joins people like Drew Carey in the celebrity wing. And a former wings. president. And he joins people like Drew Carey in the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> But yeah, so that a former uh, president of the United States is in the wrestling hall of fame. (laughs) That he is because he's a joke. That he is. Don't believe we talked about this, but what are we watching next? Is it my decision? It can be mine. We are going to continue on a not movie run. All right. And we are going to watch a thing called In and of Itself. All right. Next week. In and on of this itself. guy hasn't seen. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, if you want to see more of what we have when it comes to this channel and all the other shows, you can go ahead and check that out. You can also find me elsewhere on YouTube on the Whatever We Want podcast. New episodes every week, every Wednesday. I do it with a good friend of mine and a good friend of the show, Super Jazz. He is... Yes, yeah, Super Jazz and I, we do that every week, every Wednesday. That's nature intended. We, that's nature intended. Yep. And yes, we talk about just that, whatever we want. I also have a Twitter and a Twitch. That's Giotabi, G-I-O-T-A-V-I. Come on in, stop on by. I started to get back into streaming again, so that should be fun. And yeah, Bill, you got anything else you want to say to the folks? Kind of uh no um uh go uh go check out and subscribe to um Aquarian Rising Productions here in St. Louis. Really awesome little uh little theater company thing happening here. Support independent art, motherfuckers. Yeah, they got a show coming up in June if I believe. A colored funeral. I don't know. I don't go to that shit. <laughs> colored funeral. Check it out. Aquarian Rising. Adios this.